Yep, the line came off. Oh, all that's all over the place now. Because the cooling got too hot. Okay, so we are finally back down here with Snow Badger. It's been about, I don't know, two, two and a half weeks. And we're going to do go through a lot of updates. First, the reason why I didn't get anything done is because I was working a lot. And I finally got booted down here. Um, and then when I came back, I did two trips from Virginia up to Michigan, taking stuff up there because we're moving. And exciting news, this will be the last video and the last time I will work in Snow Badger here in Virginia. Uh, get this video up, and then the next video will be everything up in Michigan from this point forward. So go, I'm going to go ahead and get the new converter bolts in there, get the new engine mount bolts in it, and then I'm going to get everything buttoned up and hopefully we'll be starting and then all of our problems going away. So let's go ahead and get this stuff done. I got, I had to re-tap two of the torque converter bolts, so all of them are in there. Bell housing's up. I just ran the fuel through and everything's good to go, it's not leaking. These are just temporarily here. I just want to make sure everything's good to go. Uh, we'll see if everything charges. I got coolant. I will actually distilled water with water wetter in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and unplug the ignition coils so I can start it and have uh, the oil pressure go and then I'll reconnect the uh, coils and then we'll actually start it up. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so as I'm cranking this over, I'm wondering why it's taking so long to build oil pressure because it still says negative one on my sensor. Well, I'm cranking and cranking and cranking on here, as you can tell, and eventually I realized, to my mistakes, I got too excited to put everything back together that I forgot to put oil in it. So, I get out and let's go ahead and put some oil in the car so we can actually Build some oil pressure. Okay, let's try this again, round two. This time, there's actually oil in it. I forgot to put oil in it, and then I was spinning it, so it shouldn't have hurt nothing. But let's go ahead and let's go ahead and now uh, finally go get oil pressure. So while I'm starting to turn the engine over, it's building oil pressure, and I'm getting every bit of 45 to 50 pounds of pressure just from being on a starter. Well, I get super happy and all that's going through, all of a sudden I start hearing liquid pouring out and this is what happens. No. Oh, did I? Yep. Damn it. Uh, I forgot to put the turbo feed in. Damn it. Yeah, at this point, this wasn't one of my brightest moments with this car. Something so simple as adding the oil feed back on to the adapter that I had that comes off the oil filter should have been one of the things I shouldn't have forgot. But yet, I did forget to do that. And now I'm putting it on and I got a giant puddle of oil underneath the car that I do eventually clean up later. But 
I got it on now, and let's go ahead and start it for the third time. Okay, let's try it again. Now, everything should be hooked up. Oh, I got my hands off. Might as well add a little bit more. Let's put some on the ground. Okay, round three. Now let's now let's try it. Good. We started with uh, forty-five pounds. So let's go ahead and we'll plug the spark. The ignition coils back in. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it and I'm going to monitor it and also fill up the coolant and make sure everything's charging. Because remember, we had charging, oil pressure, and coolant problem. So now that's what I'm going to be checking for. Oil pressure, make sure it's good, coolant, and then make sure the charging system is going to be good to go. So let's go ahead and get this started, and uh, that's what we're going to be looking at now. All right, at this point, I'm like, this is great. Snow Badger is about to start, and everything is going smoothly. And I hear all those pops that you just heard, and I knew instantly there was something wrong, and there's something more going on that I need to figure out. As you heard, I'm getting that, like, that weird like little backfire hiccup thing going on, and that keeps happening to me, so I know there's something wrong happening, but it keeps wanting to start up like it is, so let's keep trying to figure this out. If you look through my windshield there, you see me looking down at the passenger side, and what I'm doing is I'm looking at the Terminator X ECU, and what I found out is my 6th and 7th light that is on there that control the crank signal and the cam signal are not on. The cam signal will be on blue, which is ready to sync, everything's good to go, but the crank signal says green, saying that uh, the teeth are connected, but there's no gap detected. So that's what I'm trying to figure out what's going on, why I'm not getting any crank single. I gotta look at this again where there's something going on. Let me, I'll come back. All right, so I got it running, everything's looking good. That's, uh, oil pressure's good. That's, that's saying at 13.9. We'll watch this for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and start that. All right, so it ran. I gotta figure out why it's saying no crank uh, signal and see why what's going on with that. So let me dig into that and figure out why I don't have any crank signal and we'll be right back. Cause the cam worked. Now I gotta see what's going on with the crank. Oh. All right, so I think I got it now on here we'll turn it on so on here back here you see six and seven are blue six is crank and then seven is your cam well both of those blue saying that we got signal and then when you go to start it they'll flash back and forth and then when the engine's actually running those two will go off 
So now that both of those are blue and all I did was take the starter off and push the uh, uh, plug in a little more. So let's go ahead and start this up now. Damn it. Went back to red again. What the hell? Maybe I need to get a new a new one. Well, I'm going to do that. So let me go and take that out so we can get a new one in. Okay, so what I failed to mention is when you have a Gen 3 LS and the cam sensor is in the front because they're usually in the back, on the Holly Terminator system, you have to take the outside two wires and flip them. And when you take the outside two wires and flip them, then the cam sensor and the crank sensor will talk. Because I never had any problems with my crank sensor. I only had problems with the cam sensor because of the outside two wires need to be flipped. And now that the outside two wires are flipped, the cam and crank sensors can talk to each other. And then now the car starts, which is what you're gonna see right here. All right, here goes for the second time. On, ECU, one's green, one's blue. Okay, let's see. And now they're both off. It works. Let's go see out here. So after I wanted to test drive, it got really hot and I had to get it back really fast and stopped it in my uh, driver right here. And this is what happens. So what happened is the steam port hose that comes off the heads actually just came off and it was just spewing out the distilled water and water water that I had in the coolant system. That's why you... all over the place now because the cooling got too hot thank god i made it back in time All right, so after that whole coolant debacle that went down, I just needed Snow Badger to run so I could drive it up onto the trailer, on the U-Haul trailer to bring it up to Michigan here. So uh, on day three, I went to the local drag strip and just recorded some small tire racing of some of the cars that I like. So enjoy that footage. <laughs> <laughs> 